Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video we're going to be discussing about how to basically derive a demand curve from the utility theory, right? Now we already have established the uh, now we have already established the condition in the previous videos that uh, a rational consumer behavior or you can say consumer equilibrium um, if you're talking about a single commodity or one good, right? It occurs whenever price is equal to the marginal utility. That is the um, utility that you derive from a particular product while consuming a good is equal to the price you're paying for. So you're incurring an expense, let's say, of four dollars, but you're also incurring, or you're also incurring an, a utility that is satisfa that is satisfaction of four dollars. So this is basically consumer equilibrium whenever one particular good is concerned. So a consumer would keep on consuming goods, or you can say uh, the consumer would keep on consuming the units, if, for example, um, till the point where his marginal utility is equal to the price that he's paying for, right? We've already established this in the previous videos on utility theory, right? Now, this video is specifically focusing on how we can draw or how we can derive a demand curve out of it, right? And I remember I also told you that the utility, marginal utility curve in my previous videos is equal to the demand curve, but we've already, but we haven't seen, really seen how is it equal to the demand curve. And we'll see that in this video. So I've drawn a table over here on the left. It says, let's say, just take any unit, maybe mangoes or oranges, or let's say good A. So if you consume the first unit of good A, you'd, um, the, the price of that good is $4, you get a margin utility of $7, right? And you know, as you go on consuming like the third unit, you're getting a less utility of $5 and so on and so forth. And we can see that the utility is declining as you're consuming more and more units. And if the price is $4, right so you're going to be consuming at a point where p equals to mu and that is the fourth unit of good a because the marginal utility is four dollars and so is the price so that is the consumer equilibrium as far as one uh, good is concerned so, so this is also representing rational consumer behavior and i'm going to be plotting in fact wait i'll be plotting a demand curve <coughs> In fact, let's let's not call it a demand curve first. Let's say I'm plotting price on the y-axis. So, for example, if I if I say that I'm consuming four units because the fourth unit is giving me a utility of four dollars and the price is four dollars as well. So, for instance, if the price is let's say four dollars and I am consuming how many units? I'm consuming four units. So this gives me one point over here, and this is telling me that you know price is equal to mu at this point, right? So this is basically, by the way, units on the x-axis and price on the y-axis, right? So at the fourth unit, p equals to mu, so that satisfies the condition. Now let's assume that the price of the good, you know, falls to, let's say, uh, p2, and let's say p2 is $2. So the price of the good falls to $2. Um, let me write $2. So if the price falls to, guys, $2, will I consume the first unit? Yes, because mu is greater than p2. So yes, $7 is greater than $2. I will consume this, the second unit as well, the third unit as well, the fourth the fifth unit as well because um, it gives me a utility of three dollars while well, the price is only two dollars so still i have a marginal consumer surplus of one dollar by consuming the fifth unit however the sixth unit only gives me a utility of two dollars and the price is also two dollars which means there's no consumer surplus attained but at least i will still consume it because there's no loss of consumer surplus as well there's no negative consumer surplus but again the 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 consumer equilibrium equation is satisfied uh, and hence, I'm going to be consuming six units if the price falls to $2, which gives me another point over here that if, let's say, the price falls to $2, I am going to consume, let's say, six units, right? Because so this gives me another point over here that is P1 equals to MU. In fact, I should have written P2 here, and I'll call this P1 because P1 was the initial price of $4. So... <clears throat> so at this, so, so so basically, I get I get another point P two over here, and this is telling me that if the price is two dollars, I am going to be consuming how many units? I'm going to be consuming the I'm going to be consuming six units, right? And let's say, let's say if the price rises to maybe let's say P three, right? If the price rises to P three, which is let's say if the price rises to maybe six dollars. Now what is going to happen? So if the price rises to six dollars, will I consume the first unit? Yes, I will consume the first unit since it's giving me a utility of seven dollars. Will I consume the second unit? Yes, I am going to be consuming the second unit as well because it gives me a utility of six dollars as well. Will I consume the third unit? No, I will not consume the third unit because it gives me only a utility of five dollars while the price I'm paying for at six dollars. So there's a negative consumer surplus involved. So if the price rises to let's say um, six dollars if the price rises to six dollars i'm going to be consuming less units 
and I'm going to be consuming let's say only and only how many units I'm going to be consuming only two units because the price is six dollars and the marginal utility from the second unit is only six dollars as well so so less units satisfy the condition of p equals to mu so there's another point over here that is p3 equals to mu sorry for the for the background noise okay so um if the price rises to let's say six dollars i am going to be consuming two units right so if you see guys i i basically uh, have three points over here uh, one is this point, the second is this point, and the third is this point. Now, each of these points are basically representing a consumer equilibrium. That if the price had risen to, let's say, $6, the consumer would have consumed two units. If the price is $4, the consumer consumes four units. If the price is $2, the consumer consumes six units. Now, guys, if I technically join all these points together, basically, if I join all these points together, so basically what I get is, now since i'm not drawing it to scale so if i join these points together i basically get a demand curve right i basically get a demand curve if i join these lines i get a demand curve because each point on the demand curve each point on this curve is telling me a situation of consumer equilibrium or consumer rationality that is at each point the p would always be equal to mu the p would always be equal to mu and the consumer would have acted rationally and it satisfies the condition of consumer equilibrium if it's a single commodity that you know what's going to happen is that uh, you know each point over here is representing the fact that uh, at this at that point the marginal utility is exactly equal to the price that the consumer is paying for it so hence the consumer is able to maximize his total utility but if i join these points together the the main part of this video is that if we join these points together, we simply derive a demand curve from the marginal utility theory. Hence, we say that the demand curve is also basically the marginal utility curve of the consumer. Remember, guys, the demand curve is also the marginal utility curve of the consumer because technically, if I if I take any point on this demand curve, let's say I take let's say I take this point, right? So if I take this point on the demand curve and I measure it on the y-axis, it's it's basically going to be telling me a certain price right it's going to be telling me a certain price of, of of that particular good maybe you know whatever the price is it's let's say five dollars so it's going to be telling me the price of this good and which 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 makes us conclude that let's say if the price is maybe um, five dollars so i am going to be consuming how many units i'm going to be consuming three units right because if the price is let's say five dollars my marginal utility for the third unit would also be equal to let's say five dollars which which hence we conclude that you know i'm going to be consuming three units over here so technically again the condition satisfies that you know um if the price is five dollars then, you, then this price would equal the marginal utility and hence consumer optimality or consumer rationality has been made and consumer equilibrium has been reached for a single commodity. But the main point is that each point on this utility curve, which is also the demand curve, is telling us consumer rationality. And if we join all these points together, basically we get a demand schedule or a demand curve. And that is that is how you'll tell if the past paper questions usually come that how we do we you know derive a demand curve from the utility theory and this is what you're going to be writing you're, you're going to be you know uh, telling the examiner that um, each point in the demand curve would represent the condition that the price is equal to marginal utility so so for example we have studied from the law of demand that a demand curve is downward sloping and so is the marginal utility curve because because what this is telling us that if let's say the price of this good falls the the consumer would end up buying more units right the consumer would end up buying more units and if the price goes down the quantity demanded would go up remember this law of demand the law of demand taught us that if price goes down quantity demanded extends there would be an extension in, in demand remember so this is actually satisfying it for it it's satisfying the con the condition um, or the fact that the reason why the reason basically why quantity demanded goes up if price goes down the reason why quantity demand goes up if price goes down is that whenever the price goes down the marginal utility is now greater than the price so if the marginal utility is greater than the price because the price has fallen right if the price has fallen so the consumer has a chance or a potential potential to gain consumer surplus now and he would actually tap into that consumer surplus by consuming another unit and he would keep on consuming another unit keep on consuming another unit till 
the point has reached where price is you know equal to mu so for example if the price is let's say five dollars and he's consuming three units right so if the price falls to four dollars so how many units will he consume he'll now consume four units right and this is simple this is simple a law of demand teach telling us that if the price is five dollars he will consume um, how many units he'll consume three units if the price falls to four dollars he'll now end, end up consuming four units so it's simply telling us that this extension this extension in demand has basically happened because you know um, there was a there was an additional benefit in consuming the fourth unit and the additional benefit was the additional consumer surplus that is a marginal consumer surplus that he could have actually gained in order to gain that marginal consumer surplus he consumes another unit because that's causing him an increase in consumer welfare right and he will consume such number of units till the point and again reaches the fact that where is you know his his um, his margin utility is actually equal to the price of the product so basically remember guys that um, the the demand curve is downward sloping simply because you know of the fact that it follows the law of diminishing marginal utility the demand curve is downward sloping because this follows the law of diminishing marginal utility why because again if the price goes down from four to two dollars again the now consumer consumes how many units six units why does he consume six units because there's an additional consumer surplus that he could have gained so for example let's say if the price falls to let's say two dollars so he was consuming initially he was consuming four units when the price was let's say um, when the price was uh, four dollars and he was gaining a marginal utility of four dollars as well on the fourth unit but if the price falls to now two dollars he'll consume six units because um, for the fifth unit again the marginal utility was is actually three dollars which is greater than the price of two dollars so he'll consume the fifth unit as well right but as he consumes more and more units the marginal utility declines and we can see that when he consumes a six unit his marginal utility falls to two dollars again telling us that you know as we extend down the demand curve the marginal utility keeps on falling but then the marginal utility we know that the marginal utility keeps on falling and it keeps on falling to the point the um, to the point where the new margin utility at six dollars would equal to the price so if so at six units sorry with the new margin utility at six units equals to the price which means that for the sixth unit the margin utility is uh, two dollars while the price is also the new price was two dollars so so again this is this these are the same these are the same concepts like you know the like we study that the margin utility keeps on falling so the consumer keeps on consuming till the marginal utility equals to the price of the product. So if if all these points are representing marginal utilities or consumer rationalities, um, or optimum optimum units that should be consumed to maximize total surplus or total utility, then this joining these points would just simply give us the demand curve, right? And the reason why demand curve is downward sloping, you will write it in the exam, that because it is following the law of diminishing marginal utility. As you consume more and more units because price falls, it causes an extension in demand. But the reason why it causes an extension in demand is because um, when you consume more units, so marginal utility starts to fall and then it is again equal to price. So if the price has fallen, Quantity demand would rise. When quantity demand would rise, the marginal utility would fall, and it keeps on falling until marginal utility equals to the new price again. So this is how you will. So so whenever the question comes that how um, demand curve is drawn using the concepts of of utility, this is how you will relate it. Remember, you're not just going to draw the demand curve. You also need to explain it why the demand curve is downward sloping and what are the points on the demand curve representing and how does this rational consumer behavior correlate to the correlate to the fact that your demand curve is downward sloping and how do you actually construct a demand curve using the marginal utility theory so this is it guys this is how you will construct a demand curve using marginal utility theory and i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you all around in the next video until then take care